Nachos? I bet you thought you couldn't eat nachos anymore because they're not healthy. They're usually full of junk. Well, I've got great news. We are making a super healthy version of nachos today. Totally vegan and free of added oil and other processed junk. You're gonna love them. Let's do this right now. Hey everybody, this is Dylan. Yes, we are making nachos. I know you've seen me make a lot of Latin cuisine on this channel, and that is because la comida mexicana is mi favorita. And so we're gonna make nachos, and we're gonna do it the healthy way, without the added oil and junk. Actually, this one's gonna be totally free of added salt, oil, and sugar, for those of you really bringing it. But seriously, it is so easy to forget that nachos can be a thing that we all enjoy. Uh, making a taco bar or a nacho bar is so easy. All it takes is a little bit of chopping. We're gonna make some really delicious frijoles in the Instant Pot. I'm gonna make a delicious taco meat that you may have kinda seen me do before, but it's always a little different around here. But we will have all the recipes down below Below. Click and you'll check out our blog post and we'll have everything. We'll make it really easy for you. I'm even going to show you a little chip hack because cutting all those damn tortillas and then maneuvering them around is just too much work. Without further ado, hey Dill, is that a new Instant Pot I see? This is the three quart Instant Pot and I love this little guy. This is the perfect size. Yesterday I made Starch Blaster with it for the first time and I cleared the whole pot. We have been working on this beans recipe for like two, three weeks and we're still winging it a little, but I think we've got it right this time. Let's get to the beans already. I've got two cups of dry pinto beans. Be sure to pick through those beans, which I have never done before in my life. Anyway, throw them in the instant pot. Two cups of beans. We've got a couple cups of veggie stock. Try to find that low sodium veggie stock. Keep the salt out. We'll throw the water in at the end because I'm not exactly sure how much I'm going to use yet. Next up, let's throw in a little flavor. I've got some minced garlic. You can use a few garlic cloves in here. I'm using the cheater garlic, you know, whatever. I love cumin in all of my Mexican flavored things. I couldn't do without it, so we're throwing some of that into the pot. Then I'm gonna throw in a couple tablespoons of our Fiesta Fire Blend. This is just my favorite Mexican blend of herbs and spices. You can use your own, you know, oregano, marjoram. Obviously, we've got the cumin already, things like that, some chili powder and stuff. I'm using our blend. You can buy it on the website. Okay, let's throw it in. Then we got a little bit of chopping to do but not much because we're gonna use our immersion blender in here. So all I need to do is like quarter this yellow onion, take the skin off, cut it in four, throw it in the Instant Pot, and same with a couple of jalapenos. You can take the seeds and guts out of here because there is a lot of heat in the guts. So you can just chop up a couple jalapenos, throw them in the pot, and you're ready to go. And then I'm just going to stir in like, it's either a cup and a half to two cups of water. I don't wanna have too much extra water because then you're gonna have to drain off some water after. You don't want your beans to be too wet. So I used about a cup and a half of water and that should be good to go. Let's close it up and we're just going to pressure cook this baby on high pressure for how long again, Reeves? Half an hour. Half an hour it is. Let's do it. The beans are cooking. Let's move on to our nacho meat. You're gonna love this recipe. It is the only delicious, actual healthy taco meat that I've ever had. So use it for tacos, nachos, whatever you want, burritos, you name it. You've probably seen soy curls before. They are a whole food. Nothing's been removed. It's just soybeans that have been kind of processed in a funny way. They've been dried out and they have this like meaty texture, which is really great for this recipe. They are a pretty healthy food, but they are a little bit higher in fat. So if you want to avoid those, of course you can do this with lentils. I love a hybrid approach. We're actually going to do lentils and the soy curls. So here is how you do it. All I'm going to do is take like two cups of soy curls. It's forgiving. It doesn't really matter how much. And I'm going to pour on some boiling water just to cover it. And we're going to let them sit for like 10 minutes. And after that, strain out the water, throw the soy curls into, this is the trick now. This is the hack throw them into a nut milk bag. We wanna squeeze out as much of the water as we can so that it absorbs more of our marinade that we're about to make next. And then throw them into your food processor and we're just gonna pulse them in the food processor a few times. Don't go hog wild here because you don't want it to be totally ground up into a paste. So just pulse it a few times until it has what you may remember to be like a ground beef-ish consistency, pardon my language, and then you're ready to go. The soy curls are done and it's time to make this delicious marinade. Okay, this is a very very secret recipe. Once it gets out in the wild, everybody's gonna start copying off of me. Just kidding. It is meat sauce time. We are making a meaty marinade. <laughs> <laughs> I am so proud of this recipe. It took me a while to figure out and it is really good. I'm gonna start with a couple of tablespoons worth of tomato paste. It doesn't have to be exact. Nothing I ever do is. Then it's just some dried oregano, 
smoky paprika, onion powder, a touch of cumin. You know I said I love cumin in just about everything Latin. Some coriander powder. This is a nice one. I love that. Of course, we've got the minced garlic. You use garlic, cloves, whatever. That's a good couple of tablespoons worth. I don't hold back on the garlic. And then here I've got some cinnamon and just a few cloves, like a quarter teaspoons worth of cloves. Here I've just got like 10 pitted deglet dates. This will give it a really nice sweetness. And I've just been soaking them in like a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. And then our last ingredient is these beautiful dried chili pods. I love these things. I put them in our cheese sauce, which we're gonna do in a little bit. I don't even remember which ones are which. It doesn't matter. Just get like three to five chili pods. I just bust out the stem and the seeds a little bit, shake out some seeds, and then boom, that baby can go right in the blender. Break them up, and we just want the meat of these beautiful chili peppers. They add such a delicious flavor to our nacho meat. That's it, I'm gonna throw in, you can throw a little, little bit of water or a little bit of veggie stock in just to give it a little liquid, and we'll add that as we go. I'm gonna start the blender, and let's see what happens. Oh, it smells so amazing. The water amount doesn't really matter because we're gonna cook this up on the stove. Some water is gonna evaporate. We're also gonna be cooking up some lentils in here. So you're gonna be adding water. So you don't have to concern yourself too much with the liquid. Just get it in so it can blend really nice like that and we'll be ready to go. Let's just throw it in this pot. Don't miss a drip. Get it all out of there. Quick public service announcement. Please rinse your blender immediately after use. Nobody likes a crusty blender. It's time to put this thing together. We've got our sauce in the pot and we're throwing in our meat, the soy curls here. And I've got like two thirds of a cup of dried lentils. Throw that in. You could use already cooked lentils if you wanted to, but I'm gonna throw in the dry lentils and along with that, another cup or so of water. And I'm just gonna fire this baby up. As the lentils start to absorb some of the water, you might have to add more to get the right texture that you like. It's not an exact science here. This is all very forgiving, so don't be afraid to do a little experiment and figure it out as you go. You're gonna love this recipe. Look at how beautiful. Oh my god, I wish you could smell it. It's delicious. Once it's up to a boil, just bring it down to medium low. I've literally got it on a 3 out of 10 here. And just cover it and let it simmer. Maybe even a 2 out of 10. Check it in 5-10 minutes, see if you need to add some water. And that's the meat. What do you think? Oh, that's looking good. I'm gonna leave the lid off now and let it just sort of keep absorbing and a little bit of water will evaporate and I love it. All right, let's go on to the chip hack. I told you, the old way is no longer the way that I do it. Oh, I've gotta take a stack of tortillas and cut them into these perfect little triangles and arrange them on this baking sheet and then juggle my way over to the oven. And then when you pull them out and they're all crispy and they're all falling off and you've spilled them everywhere, it's a nightmare. Well, worry no more because I've got the solution for you. All you gotta do is take a nice stack of tortillas Walk over to the oven, preheat your oven to 350 degrees, please. And just stack them on the tray. Forget all that cutting, forget the tray. You don't need any of it. Just leave them whole and take the tortillas and then just spread them out just like this. I can fit like 15 tortillas. Just throw them on the rack, just spread them on out. Boom, boom, boom. How fast is this, folks? Talk to me in the comments about how fast this tortilla hack is. Now the first batch, you're not gonna be completely sure how long it's gonna take, but it's like, just check them after the first five minutes and then every two minutes after that. And once they're just the right amount of crispy, then you know for next time. It's tortilla time. I just open the door, set that pot there and check out the simplicity here. Boom, boom. Is there anything simpler in the world? Just take the tortilla that are now nice and crispy and we just break them up. How easy is this? Just take a couple tortillas, break them up. Oh my God, we're done. Still, but they're not part of your triangles. Oh, you're right, let's throw them out. That nacho, get that nacho. I don't wanna hear anybody complaining about chips again. You've got chips, baby. It is time to make some cheese. Yes, we are making the Well Your World cheese sauce mix. It's available on the Well Your World website. Forgive me for pitching a product, but it is the best damn cheese sauce for this kind of application. Let's start with some water. I got some boiling water, which works great in the Vitamix. If your blender doesn't handle boiling water too good, then you wanna just use hot water, okay? My favorite recipe for how to make the cheese sauce is not only on the label, but it's also on the blog post down below. So I threw in the water, I'm throwing in the cheese sauce mix. Oh yeah, baby, some cashews. These are just raw cashews, throw them in there. A little bit of miso, a miso paste. This is a double batch, I'm making a big batch of cheese. And then Reebs, you're the one who figured this out, but she just loves a half a lemon in that cheese sauce. Really does add some good flavor. And for a little Latin flair, I love to throw in a few of these dried chili pods, just like we threw in to the, uh, ma the marinade for the meat. 
All I do is throw in maybe two to three of these chili pods, shake out the seeds, throw them in there. Dylan, don't lie, you do it like that Latin style every time, even for mac and cheese. I just always put the chili pods in. It gives it a good kick, a little tang, mm, 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 mm. All right, throw on the lid and let's rock and roll. Mm, mm, mm. Now tell me, could you have made it from scratch that fast? No, I don't think so, and it's delicious. Beans, beans, the magical fruit. The more you eat, the healthier you are, baby. Let's make these refried beans. This thing has been sitting. It is ready to rock and roll. I got two options for this. I'm gonna use the immersion blender, but if you don't have one, you can just throw all this in the food processor or the blender if it's liquidy enough. I haven't done it in the blender before, but it probably works just fine. Let's just turn this thing on and make some refried beans. Blend on. These not coming out just perfect. This is like the first time we've actually gotten the water amount right so that we don't have to pour off water and then sacrifice flavor. These beans are looking great. And as they just sit here with the Instant Pot lid off and keep warm setting, you know, they're just gonna kind of thicken up a little bit. So if they seem a little bit watery now, don't you worry. Okay, last step to our meat. It's all ready and delicious and beautiful. And I'm just gonna squeeze in some lime here at the very end. And then we are ready to build some nachos. I am so excited. Look at this spread, it is unbelievable. Of course, we've got our beans, our cheese, and our meat, which are all amazing. I'll put all the links to these videos below, but we've got our guac, some pico de gallo, we got a salsa verde, and then a red salsa. Mm -mm -mm. All the videos already exist, so check them out. And then I just chopped up some red onions, some jalapenos, cilantro, some black olives. The olives are salty, you know, it's optional. But I'm ready to build a bowl, what do you say, Reebs? Okay, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm not exactly an Instagrammer here. First, I've got my nachos, my chips here, and now I've got the beans going on. Well, let's sprinkle on some of that nacho meat. Oh yeah, a little bit of that cheese. Oh, <laughs> we got a little tomato, beautiful purple color, fresh chopped jalapenos, those olives on there. I mean, the pe I kind of have put a pico on, if you will, but I still made it anyway, because you know me with the pico. Green salsa, sprinkle that on, oh my goodness. It's not successful nachos until you can't actually see the tortilla chips anymore. Exactly. Oh, the red stuff. Oh boy, let's throw on a little bit of that guac. Now that is how we do nachos in this household. Am I wrong? Okay, Reeves, get in here and taste these nachos. Hey. Oh my goodness, there she is. What do you think? <laughs> Where are the chips? They're in there, I promise. Oh, oh my God. Like you said, you didn't have to make every single one of these items, but I'm sure glad you did. Oh yeah, you don't have to go quite as fancy, but boy, it pays off. I'm excited. This is the new party food. You can leave the chips whole and make a tostada. Still, I love when you make me nachos. I love them too. I will make them many more times. Click below if you wanna see the blog with all of the recipes included. Like and subscribe to the video. Comment down below if you liked this one and we'll keep making them. Thanks for watching, bye.